Corneoplastique, the art of vision surgery. Corneoplastique involves this 5S protocol not only to determine the cause but also to outline a surgical plan towards unaided emetropia. The first S is sight. For visual potential in this affected eye, this can be further delineated using a hard contact lens trial. The second S stands for scar. Is the cornea clear or does it have a scar? For superficial scars, we can peel these under the laser during the refractive ablation, while for deeper scars, we may resort to lamellar techniques to correct the scar and build the cornea for future laser shaping. The third S is shape. Regular shapes like myopia, hyperopia, or astigmatism, and irregular shapes seen in corneal pathologies and previous refractive surgeries, which can be determined before surgery using a hard contact lens trial. Strength. Is the cornea thin, as in keratoconus, or post-lasic ectasia, or is it thick, as in epikeratophagia? In thin corneas, we may have to build the cornea using lamellar techniques to prepare for laser refractive surgery, while in a thick cornea, we may need to peel the corneal lenticle off to achieve normalcy of the cornea before laser. The next S is site of involvement. Obviously, central pathology are visually more detrimental than peripheral pathologies. Thus, we see, using this 5S protocol, we can determine which of these S factors are involved and how many of them in order to select a single or staged surgical approach to build the cornea for final reshaping with the eczema laser towards unaided emetropia. For example, in ocular surface pathologies like advanced pterygium, sutureless amniotic graft can be used for excellent clinical and visual outcomes. In conditions of shape anomalies following previous refractive surgeries, laser ablation can be performed for excellent emetropic outcomes. Extreme shape anomalies like keratoconus can be stabilized using intacts. Conditions of superficial scarring, as seen here, can be peeled right under the eczema laser with simultaneous refractive ablation for excellent visual and clinical outcomes. In conditions of deeper scarring with involvement of strength and visual compromise, lamellar techniques may need to be used to not only remove the scar and build the cornea, but also improve the strength for future laser surgery. Let's now see this art in action. Corneoplastique gives us the ability to reconstruct the corneal architecture knowing its lamellar anatomy in preparation for final reshaping using the eczema laser. Eczema surface ablation is great for cases of reshaping like astigmatic keratotomy, radial keratotomy, hexagonal keratotomy, including penetrating transplants with high residual astigmatism for excellent visual endpoints. In cases of superficial previous LASIK flap abnormalities like flap wrinkles, a myopic laser profile can be used for flattening along with mitomycin C for excellent visual and refractive outcomes. For cases of subepithelial scarring, these patients can undergo scar peel right under the laser, gently pulling the entire scar so it's removed completely off the normal cornea, followed by refractive photoablation. In cases of more prominent scars, as long as they are superficial to the Bowman's membrane, we can still peel them off using the lamellar anatomy to our advantage by creating a resistive guided technique as seen here, pulling vertical and away from the central cornea. Once the scar has cleared the visual axis, the eczema laser photoablation can continue. This is followed by mitomycin C application once again to a clear visual axis with an excellent refractive outcome.
In cases of deeper opacities, a lamellar layer needs to be created using automated techniques as seen here with the scar contained in this lamella. A similar lamellar layer needs to be created on the donor eye and this flap can then be replaced using sutureless techniques or sutured anterior lamellar keroplasty. In cases of deeper scars and higher irregularities, one can use hand lamellar techniques to go down to the layer we wish. Separate that damaged lamellar of cornea. Once again, a similar hand lamellar technique on the donor eye, going deeper to create a thicker donor tissue for future laser surgery, and suture this to the patient's eye. Also, posterior sutureless lamellar transplants can be used to build the cornea, like in this case. And in some cases, we may need to lift a corneal lenticle, like this case of decentered epicardophagia, to once again regain corneal anatomy. Thus, this art of combining staged, topical, brief, and visually promising techniques in preparing the cornea for laser vision surgery and repairing the cornea from laser vision surgery is corneoplastique. Thank you.